out, you're spreading that purity, you're spreading that love into other people's lives. Sean, Kyle, Alex, I'm Lindsay, but Sean and Arlene, May and Aaron, Kyle, Phil out here with a free Cunningham, good to meet you. We got the, the awkward virtual handshake out of the way, so uh, we're officially friends, and we can we can start talking about what what I invited you to come here and, and to talk about. Um, and that that grand concept is purity. <laughs> Everybody's favorite talk, the purity talk. Um, yeah, I know how much everyone loves that, but we're gonna try to look at it a different way. Um, and to do that, you know, we're gonna look at kind of uh, you know my story and the, and the steps. And progressions that's gotten me to where I am and we're gonna take a trip down memory lane and to do so I brought some pictures and it's funny to think you know going from a two-year-old range in the Wild West to playing the Atlanta Braves organization um, it's been quite a ride man you know I've seen seen all different parts of the country played with players from all over the world um, and had a chance to just accumulate all kinds of experiences and it's funny because just like everyone else, all these experiences build on one another and mesh together to kind of make me who I am. Um, so that's what this is all about, is simply sharing my story. And you know, I don't share my story and talk about myself in hopes that you necessarily understand me or things that I've done in my life or things that I've gone through, but in hopes that you kind of see how, how God works in people's lives. Because um, that's really what it's all about. So. Um, I'm not here to preach, you know, that's the last thing I want to do is to preach. There's a lot, there's people out there way more qualified to do so, um, you know, than me. But, you know, I'm simply sharing my story in hopes that you might see God's. This song goes out to all my people out there. So I grew up a huge Braves fan, and I can remember Sunday afternoons with my grandparents watching the Braves play on TV. And I can remember them yelling, uh, you know, at all the big names of the time, Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz. Uh, I can remember them, you know, watching Chipper Jones, uh, you know, coming up as a, as a young player. I can remember Andrew Jones stepping into the World Series as an 18-year-old. I can remember the Braves going on their streak and winning the 14 division titles. You know, the team of the 90s, that's what I grew up watching. Uh, I remember them winning the World Series in 95. And it was just, it was really cool to grow up in that atmosphere because it's Braves country and as, as a young, you know, young kid who, who's active into sports, that's what I grew up idolizing. That's what I grew up watching. Those are the people that I grew up and I wanted to be like. So I would take over those moments from, you know, watching them on TV and I would take them out into the yard and, and I would step into their shoes and I would, I would get the game winning hit in the bottom of the ninth to win the game. You know, it was, it was me that was winning the World Series. Uh, so that's, that was my role. Um, growing up being a Braves fan. And then I got the, the opportunity of a lifetime. I was playing ball just up the road at Jacksonville State University and um, I got a phone call. It was the Atlanta Braves on the line and they're, they're asking me, you know, how would you like to be an Atlanta Brave? You know, I mean, that's hands down easy question, right? Of course I want to be an Atlanta Brave. That was, that's what I grew up wanting to be. Um, so, I, so I took the chance and and got selected in the second round of the 2010 uh, draft to the Atlanta Braves. And it was just like a dream come true. So I go from playing in a, in a regional um, at Auburn, you know, under the lights, college atmosphere, to turning around a week and a half later, and I'm suited up playing with the Rome Braves just down the road. So, you know, I guess it was at this point that I was officially in minor league baseball. We coming at you with a little thing called purity. We're bringing you some support. Now, minor league baseball is far from the glamorized million dollar contracts and the billboard ads. Now, don't get me wrong, you're taken care of, but it's nothing like playing on a stage like Turner Field or Fenway Park or Yankee Stadium. But what the minors do for you is they prepare you to, to play at these places, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Because, you know, baseball becomes a, a huge part of your life uh, at this level. And if you can't, you know, respect all these areas of your life, then you become nothing but a baseball player. 
This song goes out to all my people out there. See, because guys learn how to handle themselves because all of a sudden young guys are taken away from structure, taken away from their friends, taken away from their families, taken away from their, their schools and colleges and high schools. Um, and they're given the root of all evil, right? Money. So all of a sudden, you know, we have this recipe of young guys away from structure with money. So unfortunately, minor league baseball sometimes becomes surrounded by, by things that aren't quite pure. This song goes out to all my people out there. So here I am chasing a dream. And all these distractions and all these temptations are kind of calling my name. You know, do you go out after the game? Do you chase the girl? You have a good week at the plate and, and all of a sudden pride starts tapping on your shoulder. A guy gets called up and, and you feel jealousy start to creep in. So you start to think, you know, where do I fit into baseball? Um, yes, I'm a baseball player, but no, I don't want to be these stereotypes. So you really start to, to think about who you are. Well, I had a chance uh, to do this, you know, this past season I ended up getting hurt. And I spent about six weeks down in Orlando rehabbing. And while it might sound cool, you know, spending six weeks down in the Disney complex, um, the hotel becomes a, a lonely place. Uh, and you have a lot of time to think and a lot of time to reflect on everything that's going on. So after the, the whirlwind of, of being drafted in the first year and then coming back to my first full season, um, I finally had a chance to sit and think about, about who I was and who I wanted to become. Because, you know, with baseball being such a large part of your life, you have to fit it into all aspects of your life. So I started to really dive in. So, you know, the best place to start in, in trying to, to break it all down is the beginning. So here we are, um, at the beginning, trying to find out exactly what purity is. Um, so we set to the streets, and we, we tried to find out what the world thought about purity. So we loaded up the car, Packed it up with the equipment and we set out for the city. Find out what, what the world says about purity. So rock your job. So rock your job. So rock your job. Got clean your soul. Clean. So rock your job. So rock your job. Throw your hands up and show. So here we are in downtown Atlanta, Centennial Park. Uh, it's a nice day to do this. We're going to try to find some people to talk to us out here on the streets. So hopefully we have a good day. Yeah, so we're out here on the streets with Sean, Kyle, Alex, have Lindsay. So Sean and Arlene, May and Aaron. Kyle and Phil out here with a free Kool-Aid stand. It's just a party out here. We're setting out to see what, what people say about purity, you know, how, how people define purity. Um, let me think. I don't know. I'm not. Um. Hard. I mean, I never really thought. You know, actually thought about. What that's actually is what purity. we're what we're finding is. Yeah. How would you define purity? It's not just a one faceted thing. It's it, it covers every aspect of your life. <laughs> Maybe babies are the closest thing to purity. <laughs> Some people think of purity as in how well you live your life and how pure your life is all around and that is what I would would um would say in the zone getting like who you are you know what I mean so being just purely being. just being purity is as close to real as it gets not even in a religious aspect but just somebody that that carries their life in a defined set of morals that are acceptable in whatever their beliefs are they carry themselves with with firm confidence and they do do the right thing. Trying to be in God as best you can. When I think of purity, I just think of clean. Sex, sexual temptation or sex outside of marriage. The right mindset, the right attitude. You know, a lot of people think of it as purity as like a, in a sex perspective. Bible church or something, you know, like just strictly, I don't know, even church probably isn't that pure or innocent anymore. But I think it's more. Probably innocence, maybe. Immersing yourself in Christ. When I think of pure, I think of purely. You know, is there some embodiment in, in our culture, in our society, and the media that um, kind of brings this concept of purity all together as, as one person? Just kind of... Nobody in existence, you know, save for maybe Jesus, can be considered to be pure. 
Axl Rose is pretty purely. Um, like mainstream, uh, not not really. Kanye West is pretty purely. Tim Tebow. <laughs> Daredevil's pretty purely. I guess people think about Tim Tebow and how he kind of represents that on the football field. Uh, not off the top of my head. I don't know. To focus on any one individual and say that is the embodiment of purity is hard to find. If not, you know, impossible in this day and age. <laughs> Deadpool. Deadpool. Definition Deadpool. of purely. Yeah. If you set your, your sights or your hopes on being like somebody who you think embodies purity, you're always going to end up disappointed. So, so this concept of purity, um, does it play any part in, um, in your lives, your daily lives, or even your spiritual Spiritually lives? for me, it's uh, trying to stay in the Word of God. I mean, I know from personal experience, every time that I've been, that I've just kind of gradually gotten away from God, it's just gotten worse and worse for me. I just, I've been, I felt so much lonelier and so much more depressed. It's just like, it's awful for me. It's, just, it's not purely, not involved. So you have to constantly stay in it because if you don't, your, your ideas and how you view the world and how you see life are going to change gradually over time, whether you realize it or not. I do not do anything that is not purely. You shared with me a little bit about, you know, y'all's personal relationship. Um, and deciding to wait, that's pretty awesome, something you don't, you don't always find. Try and stay connected on more of like a generic level with like the world around me and who I am inside. Not something I necessarily think about. I mean, in my spirituality, it would be like looking forward to where it's supposed to belong. Like it's going to be way better there than it is if I try it now. Like waiting just a little bit is going to be so worth, um, so worth it when I get married. I try to, I try to like live a good life and a full life and a helpful life to others, but I guess that considers living a living life with purity. I mean, it's an everyday thing. It's something that you have to strive, in my opinion, to do. It's not just you're not just pure. Like what you think is the right thing is healthy purity for yourself. I mean, they say like love is a verb. You have to. It's an action, and that's to me what purity is. It's an action of constantly focusing your mind in the right areas. So it's been a long day of interviews, and we finally made it back to the truck. Uh, we had a lot of people turn us away, and and just didn't feel comfortable doing the interview. Um, but we also met a lot of cool people uh, that were willing to talk, um, shared a lot of cool stories, and, and got to just share, you know, share some of the love with, with the people out on the streets. Going through the process, things that you know, kind of stick out to my mind is, you know, purity was kind of a tough subject for a lot of people to talk about. It was just awkward. Um, let me think. I don't know. I'm not. Um. They didn't feel comfortable because it's not. Most people kind of see purity as something that's not really a part of our lives. Not something I necessarily think about. I mean, like no one and, and nothing is is really pure. Bible, church, or something, you know, like just strictly, I don't know. Even church probably isn't that pure and isn't anymore. You know, we all start out as this this pure being, and and the world kind of takes it away from us. It's something that we have, and then we lose it, um, which is you know, understandable. There's you know, where everyone's surrounded by temptation and by the distractions from from our true calling, from our true purpose, from our spiritual connection. Temptation is is everywhere because again, we're human. So hopefully, you know, as we look further into into our study on what purity is, we can we can start to identify purity on this on the standpoint of how is it relevant to my life. The devil tries to